CSIS 2430 is filmed before a live studio audience. So let's talk about joins, meats, and the bullying product. The join is just, it's an OR operation on a zero, on two zero one matrices, okay? A meat is an AND operation on two zero one matrices. The boolean product is a combination of the two. So let's start with joins. This is how we denote it. It's A or B. A being the first matrix, B being the second matrix. So let's take a look at an example here. If I want to OR these with each, with each other, or in other words, join these together, all we're going to do is just basically do addition, ma uh, matrix addition. All we're really saying is this. Take a close look at what happened there, right? So what's going on here is I'm just simply saying this ORed with this will give us that in the resulting matrix. This ORed with this will give us that in the resulting matrix, and so on and so forth. Does that make sense? This gives us this. This gives this is just matrix addition, right? We've already we already looked at that. Does that make sense? What's going on there? Okay. So that will ultimately give us the, that right there. Remember, one, think of it as a truth value, true, and zero is false. If you have a true or a false, what do you have overall? True, right? True or false together is true. Only one of them has to be true. So does everybody see how? The first two matrices became that, this one down here. So does everybody see how this is this, which ultimately is that? Yeah? It's the question that drives us. Questions? Is that getting old yet? Good. <laughs> yeah. Um, Who said so that? Oh, you do, you were the ventriloquist of the class. <laughs> Man. <laughs> So, so a two by three matrix can't be symmetric, right? Cannot. They can't. Yep. So they have to only be like three by three, four by four. Yes, it has to be a square matrix. Very good. Yeah. The, the question was, can a non-square matrix be considered symmetric? And the answer is no. So generally, when we're talking about that property, the, the symmetry of a matrix, if we're using a matrix to represent a relation, all relations are relations are all. When we care about those properties, the matrices are relations on themselves, or the relations are relation on self, which means if my original set had one, two, and three, then I'm doing a relation of one, two, and three on one, two, and three, which will always be square. It will always, always be a square matrix. Yep. Good question. Others? Let's look at a meet. A meet is an AND operation. Again, it's denoted as A and B. This is back to our very first day of class. So this is the same basic idea here, right? How do I do a meet on these? Say again. It's it's it looks like addition, except you're not you're not adding. But yeah, it looks like addition. It looks the same way. Just like before, we weren't really adding with a or operation. But that's correct. This is what it'll look like. We're taking the this component here, and it with this to give us this, and so on down the line. That and that gives us that all the way down. When all is said and done, we end up with this matrix. And again, the reason for that is because zero ended with anything is zero, right? Most of those, like all except for one, is zero ended with something else. And the something's always a one in a zero one matrix. In our case, we, the bottom center number there, one, the reason that's true is because it was one ended with one. You good on that? Okay. It's the question that drives us. Questions? Let's look at the Boolean product. This is the, the main reason we want to talk about a meet and a join, because it's kind of a combination of the two. So in Boolean algebra, the OR operation is kind of like addition, and the AND operation is very much like multiplication. When we perform a Boolean product, it's very similar to performing multiplication on a regular matrix. Very similar. But rather than multiplying and adding, we actually meet and join. We and and or. This is how we denote it. There, I could not find the symbol for that in the little symbols in PowerPoint, so I did, that's actually a little graphic I had to draw to get that. But it's just a circle with a dot in it, right? So let's take a look at what would the Boolean product of 
one zero zero one one zero b with this one one zero zero one one. What is the Boolean product of that? Well, it's very much like multiplication in a regular matrix. We take the first row, multiply it by the first column, except we're not multiplying, we're anding. We and those together, and then we or the results. So when all is said and done, I'm going to and this, and I'm going to get 1, and I'm going to and this, and I'm going to get 0. Then I'm going to or 1 with 0, and that will give me whatever goes here. Dig it? It works the same way where our final matrix is going to be how big? It's going to be a 3 by 3, yeah, right? This gives us the answer 1. Does everybody see why that's 1? We good with that? Okay. Next up, we, we take the second row, first column. We do the AND and OR operation, and what do we get? 0. Zero. Next one, 1. And now the next one's going to be the first row with the second column. So I moved the little signs over, and we're going to bring that in there. It's kind of squishy there. But what's the final answer going to be? One. One. I appreciate the enthusiasm. Thank you. About Brian, what's the answer? One. one. Let's go to the next one here. Uh, it's already there. I didn't put the little pictures up for you. So see if we can figure these out without seeing the pictures. Let's go. JP, what's the next one going to be? One. One. Very good. And the last one, Kyle. Zero. Zero. Very good. Again, if this is a little bit unclear, you can rewind and rewatch that just to make sure we understand it. It's the question that drives us. Questions. Now that we know how to calculate the Boolean product of two matrices, let's take a look at an interesting thing that can happen when you do a Boolean product of a matrix on itself. And, or a Boolean product of a matrix on itself times the matrix again, and so on and so forth. In other words, the Boolean product of R factors. We're raising a Boolean matrix to the Rth power. And the way we denote this is A representing whatever the matrix is, and then superscript R, or whatever letter we're using, with the brackets around it, those matrix brackets. So let's take a look at uh, how this would play out. This will ultimately end up being A, Boolean product with A, Boolean product with A, R number of times. So if, we're, if R is 10, then it'll be A, Boolean product, A, Boolean product, and so on and so forth, 10 times. In our case, we're going to look at how to deal, this, deal with this for in, an infinite number of times. We'll see that in just a moment. What will happen, though, is eventually when you start doing this, when you keep multiplying a matrix by itself and then multi or Boolean producting the matrix to the result of the previous Boolean product of that matrix and so on and so forth, you'll end up getting a repeating pattern. And we'll walk through an example to make sure this makes some sense here. So as an exercise here, we're going to calculate matrix A raised to the nth power for all positive integers n. And again, we're doing this, we're, we're doing the Boolean product of matrices. So here's the actual problem. This is what it looks like. We're starting off with matrix A here, which is 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. And what we're asking here is, what's the Boolean product of A times A? That's A to the 2 there, or A squared. And then A to the 3rd and A to the 4th, all the way up to A to the N. And I want to know that for all, all positive integers N. That's everything. There's an infinite number of positive integers. So how do we figure this out? This property that we'll eventually see a repeating pattern here will be the answer to this. So let's start off with taking the, bo the Boolean product of the matrix on itself. And we just, all we did here is we have our original matrix A right here. And then we Boolean product it with this itself. And that is the result. We do the Boolean product calculation, I should say. And that's the result. This final one here is the Boolean product of A and A. So now we have what a squared is. Let's take a look at the next one, which is a to the third. And again, the final product of that would be right here. And remember what we're doing, we just took a squared, which is this one right here, just moved it down here, and we multiplied it or used the Boolean product of the original, which is a right here, and that ultimately gives us this final answer here. 
We're going to continue doing that until we start to see this repeating pattern that I'm talking about. So there's A to the third again. There's A to the fourth. And when you see the final matrix there, it's all ones except for that zero in the middle. If we take that, multiply it by the original, do the Boolean product of the original, then our final answer will be this one, one, one. Now, think about that for just a minute. This final response, this final answer here. What if I were to Boolean product this with the original matrix again? What would our result be? I think you can quickly see that it will be just all ones again. And so no matter what, if I go A to the sixth, A to the seventh, A to the eighth, it's just going to be 1, 1, 1 all the way through. It won't always be 1, 1, 1, but it will be, there will be a repeating pattern. We're going to look at an example in a moment that's not all ones, but we still have a repeating pattern. So now, how do we answer our question of what is A to the N for all positive integers N? Well, here's our result here, and the answer is this. A to the N is equal to A to the fifth for all integers N with N greater than 5. Well, we know what A to the one is it's the original matrix we know what a to the two is it we saw it on a previous slide we know what a to the third was that was on a previous slide a to the fourth was on a previous slide a to the fifth is on this current slide and a to the fifth is what it is for all n where n is greater than or equal to five so five six seven eight nine up through infinity the answer is this one right here so because the previous slides showed what one two three four were and this slide shows what fifth what number five is all of those five matrices, that's the answer to calculate A to the N for all positive integers N. That now is, we have the answer for every single possibility. Let's take a look at a second problem here. We have a new matrix here, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, and 0, 1, 0. And I want, it, it's the same question, A to the N for all positive, positive integers N. Let's take a look at what that would look like. Start off again, we're going to square it. And our square will be this new matrix here. Right, so now we know that the answer to a to the 2 is just this right here. And now we're going to take a to the 2, let's just kind of move it up out of the way there. And we're going to take a to the or a squared, and we're going to figure out what a to the 3rd is. So we take a squared there, and we take our original matrix right there, and we get our final product as that. And again, if you want to make sure that the math is correct, Feel free to stop the video and look at it and make sure you understand how to get it or rewind, rewind back to earlier in the video where we talk about how to calculate a Boolean product. But now we know that A to the third is this pattern right here. So let's move that up out of the way and let's calculate A to the fourth. And again, we'll take A to the fourth, which is A cubed, multi Boolean product with the original matrix. When you do that, we get this answer. Now look at that closely. Does that look familiar? It's exactly the same as a squared. A to the fourth is the same as a squared. Interesting. Okay, so we now know the value of a to the fourth. Let's just go ahead and move it up out of the way. Let's calculate a to the fifth. Again, because we know that this times the original gives us this, well, we know that this, which is the same thing as this, times with the original will give us this. It's the same thing. This matrix and this matrix is the same. So when you multiply either one of them by this, sorry about all the blue boxes, you will get the exact same product. So we don't even have to do the math here to know this. We just know that A5 will be the same as A cubed. Well, what happens if I take A to the fifth and I multiply it by the original matrix? I'm going to get the same thing as A squared. And if I multiply it again, I'm going to get a to the seventh will be the same as a cubed. And we'll see this repeating pattern over and over again. We're going to bounce back and forth between the red one and the green one, as you see on the screen there. So knowing that, what can we say by looking at this? What is the Boolean product for all a to the n for all positive integers n? What's the pattern we see here? So the final answer to a to the n for all n is a to the third for all odd n that's greater than 1 and then a squared for all even n. When it comes to this discrete structure class, whenever we do math or calculations or do all these funny things to represent stuff, there's a question I always like to ask and to keep in the back of my mind and hopefully you're, hopefully you're keeping in the back of your mind, which is why? Why do we care? What's the point of all this? Well, we're gonna see in an upcoming videos when we learn how to use a matrix to represent a relation, we'll see that this Boolean product calculation of calculating the Boolean product of a matrix on itself 
can be very useful in helping us to determine properties of a relation that this matrix would be representing. Again, we're going to learn how a matrix can represent a relation in upcoming videos. So this is a very useful tool for figuring out certain properties. Now, when you get this repeating pattern by doing the Boolean product of a matrix on itself and then the Boolean product of that product on its on the original matrix and so on and so forth, and you're continually doing that and you get this repeating pattern, that's just an interesting property that you'll see occurs when you raise a matrix to a power. When, we, when you get into things like transitive closures and things like this that we don't really cover in this class, this becomes an interesting property to look at and, and a useful thing to study. The book in chapter nine, various chapters of nine, 9.1, two and three, it's all about using matrices to represent relations and other ways you can represent relations. And it does cover some of that stuff in a little bit more depth there. We don't really dive into that in this particular class, but if you want more information, check out those few chapters. So that's it for this video. The next couple of videos will be about representing relations. And again, it will be one of the things we'll talk about is how to use a matrix to represent a relation. See you guys.